All right, and welcome to the Jenkins Documentation Officer uh, Office Hours. This is the March 30th edition, uh, 2023. Thank you all for coming. Uh, today we have myself, Bruno Verachtin, and Mark Waite joining us in the in the meeting. Uh, and for our agenda, we have a couple new blog posts to mention and highlight. Uh, the Jenkins Award voting period is now closed. Uh, some uh, changes to the Jenkins uh, Manage Jenkins UI that recently uh, were implemented and what we're looking to do to help with that. Uh, updates to the Jenkins book pages uh, page. And uh, finally, this was something that we were going to discuss last week, but I wanted to hold off, make sure that we have a full house to discuss. Um, and we'll talk about chat GBT and documentation and where things are at a little bit. Um, there are good and bad things to it and benefits and takeaways that we can really use, but um, we'll get there. Uh, anything else on the that we need to put on the agenda today or talk about? No. All right, then. Uh, so first things first on the uh, blog posts here. So um, something that just was published the other day, the new Linux repository signing keys. Uh, this is hugely important. Um, this is something that has uh, been implemented now as of 2.397 and will be part of 2.387.2. Um, so uh, these, this blog post from Mark covers the ways to go about making sure that the updated uh, signing key is uh, implemented. And um, yeah, I think it expired on today, if I'm not mistaken, the 30th, or was it? A different day, Mark. That the old one had expired. I nope. Now. It today is the today is the day. Okay. So yeah. So um, super important to uh, take a look and update things as necessary since this is in effect. Yeah, um, and uh, most of my machines. Sorry for interrupting. Most of my machines are using Jenkins through Docker. So I said, mm. but I have almost forgotten. I have three machines. Uh, x86, ARM32, and R64, which are using Docker through the package manager. So I followed the tutorial and it did work. Thanks a lot, Mark. All went fine. Fantastic. Thanks for letting us know, Bruno. And uh, thanks to Basil for helping make sure that the instructions are uh, accurate for, for right now. Uh, next up on the blog post. So uh, Bruno actually was, uh, has, is, in the process of writing some uh, posts about Android and Jenkins. This is the first one. Uh, and from what I read, Bruno goes into a description and a brief history of what Android and Jenkins relationship is looked like or lack thereof, how they work together and how to make Android uh, builds on Jenkins or use, uh, or sorry, the other way around, Android sorry. to build Jenkins. Yeah. That's because I read two different articles. One of them is not yet published, but so yes, I'm trying to run Jenkins to build something on Android and I'm using Jenkins to build some Android apps also. So all of this is intermixed and that's why uh, it's difficult to explain. Um, yeah, uh, we'll talk later on about ChatGPT and so on. But first of all, the image you see there is a work by an AI tool called uh, Midjourney. I had a few credits, so I just has uh, something. Could you do something about um, the bug droid mascot and uh, the Jenkins um, butler? And boom, I got this image. So why not? They are hugging. That's cool. And I don't have any more credits for Midjourney, so you won't see any other of my assisted creations. And another thing about ChatGPT, a, a colleague of mine just read the few pa first paragraph and told me, hmm. That sounds fishy. Did you use ChatGPT on this one? I said, no, I'm afraid of it was just a lack of inspiration. So maybe one of these days I will be able to fail the Turing test if I'm sounding like ChatGPT. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we'll get to that. I think there's a lot of benefits to chat GPT. It's a matter of how you go about using those benefits and help that it gives you, but we'll get there. Um, this is fantastic, though, Bruno. It's it's a really lovely backstory and um, insight to the things that might not get talked about or discussed on the uh, inherent Jenkins documentation. So this is really nice to have, and I think opens the door. And I mean, you said it yourself in this. Does it sound strange uh, enough yeah. or appealing enough to you to get involved? Like, let's go. That's that's the kind of attitude we want to have, and uh, 
you know, bring people in, give them reason to come join us and check out Jenkins. So this is the sort of stuff that does that really well. Thank you so much, Kevin. Yeah, of course. Uh, great. Uh, so next up on the list, uh, agenda again, uh, the Jenkins Awards voting period ended on March 28th. So that has closed. Uh, a massive thank you to all the participants and nominees. Um, this wouldn't be possible without anyone. So that's crucial. Uh, and the award, the award winners will be announced and presented with their awards at CDCon this coming May uh, 8th to 9th. So uh, look out for that. And uh, yeah, more to come on that. Uh, the manage Jenkins UI changes. Uh, these are changes that came about in the weekly release 2.395. Uh, and this change essentially simplifies a lot of the settings names to be uh, one or two words instead of uh, manage plugins, it's just plugins. Instead of uh, configure tools and uh, security, it's you know tools or just credentials, stuff like that. So um, the idea is that in uh, simplifying the settings names, it just makes it a lot easier for people to navigate and users to uh, work within. Uh, really nice, really clean. Uh, big thanks to uh, Jan for doing all that. Uh, and so we've had some uh, updates for the text of itself, of course. And then uh, the other thing that we need to update are screenshots within the documentation. And we do actually have some uh, contributors working on that as we speak. Um, I've been working with them on making sure that the screenshots are uh, really well done and clear and high quality and um, making sure that things are aligned with the existing documentation and only changing what we need to change. Uh, and it's been really great. I've had a lot of good conversations and um, collaboration with new contributors that are getting started with Jenkins. Um, it's really fun and it's a really nice way to contribute, participate, be a part of it, uh, like we always talk about without needing to have expertise in any area. So, uh, and on top of that, um, along with the screenshot updates, I'm looking, uh, I'm looking into guidelines and best practices for screenshots and image images, uh, which I'm going to collect, put together and compile and add, submit it as a pull request to add to the contributing guide. Um, there are other considerations that need to be taken in, into account here, like SEO and um, copyright and everything like that. You know, these are going to be on a public site, so we need to do some. Uh, I need to do some work to make sure that everything is uh, okay there, and that we're setting everyone up for success when it comes to adding these. Um, and that will be, uh, like I said, I'll submit that as a pull request, and I will post in the community Jenkins the IO discourse site to make sure that that conversation is being held with the rest of the community. Um, we've had some discussion in Gitter, uh, but I think for how fleshed out and extensive this could become, the community is a much better place for it. Uh, next up on the agenda, so there was an update to the books pages recently. Uh, we've had folks submitting a lot of new books to the Jenkins.io site. Um, so we have a new updated books page. We have a disclaimer to explain that, uh, you know, the books are sorted from newest to oldest, and we have removed the numbered ordering so that there's no mistake of ranking. Uh, this is really important since um, we don't want to appear to be recommending one author over another or saying, you know, this book is the best. We want everyone to have the opportunity to make those decisions on their own. We're here to bring that information to the user base. Um, and there's uh, definitely going to be some uh, uh, guidelines on book submissions as well in the contributing guide. That's another thing that I'm working on and adding. Uh, again, it will be part of a separate pull request that I will also submit and share with the community. Uh, and on a small note on that, documentation um, submissions, a little bit of formatting and a couple other items um, that shouldn't inherently change how anyone's adding content, but um, just to make life easier for everyone when it comes to reviewing those pull requests, being able to provide really clear and consistent feedback and constructive feedback, uh, and overall just making sure that that collaboration is smooth. And I, I, I feel like one of the things that I'm trying to work on now is uh, more responsive communication and engagement with the community. So that's another way that uh, we can really stick to that and help and engage uh, while also making things a little bit more clear. Okay, um, and there was a recent PR to uh, 
fix the footer, make sure that it stays on the bottom of the page as it is here. Uh, some larger screens, it displays a little wonky, but um, it was something that we uh, I emerged need to be reverted. Now we're back to where we were prior. Uh, so the bottom footer here uh, is actually a web component that was created by ja Gavin Mogan. Uh, so the original pull request was a little off base in the sense of where the change should have happened. Uh, but we resolved it, reverted back, and everything was OK. And uh, if anything, too, uh, thank you to uh, Jibnek to, for working with the user um, Mahmoud, who's one of the Google Summer of Code uh, participants, he's being very ambitious and looking to make that change. Uh, that's amazing. We want to see that sort of stuff. And the community engagement is really where all, we all live. So uh, thank you to both of you for your work. Uh, and then the last item on the agenda that I had today, uh, and I wanted to leave some room because I feel like this could be a longer conversation, is uh, chat GPT and where that stands and what we can what we want to do with that in terms of documentation. Um, all that being said, uh, I am personally biased against it, but only because I'm a writer and I this is my well, this is what I do. So it's a little different. Um, however, uh, being a writer, I also recognize how difficult writing can be and how it's really not the easiest thing in the world for folks if uh, it's not, you know, something that's constantly being done or reinforced or just in general documentation can be really finicky or specific and yeah, it's, it's tough. Um, saying things in the right way can always be a bit of a challenge, even for someone who's a native speaker of the language. Uh, I struggle with English constantly, no surprise here. Um, but there's a lot of benefits there and I think it's important to really be aware of the benefits and the help and the and and the good things that chat gpt can provide while also recognizing its limitations and their the fact that there is a user element to chat gpt and it can only go as far as the person putting in information um, it is ai is capable of a lot of autonomous things but at the end of the day it's not all on itself um, it is on the user uh, if they are creating this content to test and verify and make sure that what chat GPT is putting out is factually correct. Um, one of the things that we've been uh, we've noted is that with Stack Overflow, uh, they've actually just gone ahead and say outright that chat GPT is banned due to the fact that it's overwhelming them for moderation uh, and from a response point of view where the responses themselves are worded really well come across as really confident and unassuming, but there might be something wrong with that. And, and it's that's on the onus of the user and the reviewer to check and make sure that everything is correct, but we should make sure that we're submitting things that are factually accurate before we get to that point. Um, all that being said, I want to make sure that this is open and, um, explored appropriately and I don't want to shut anyone down or, or say we shouldn't use it like I said there's a lot of benefits um so uh Mark Bruno what are your feelings and thoughts towards chat GPT Bruno you first okay um so I shot myself in the foot uh, <laughs> um well I've been experimenting with chat GPT these last weeks uh at first, I was really reluctant to even have a look at it. I didn't have an account, anything. I don't want to, you know, everybody was talking about ChatGPT. And before that, everybody was talking about Web3. And before that, everybody was talking about NFTs or blockchain, crypto. As, no, I won't go into that train. But uh, I saw more and more examples of people saying, oh, wow, um, it was so helpful and I, you know, it took me only two hours to solve a problem that would have taken me maybe two days or something. So I said, oh, really? And then I saw also some people saying, uh, this thing is way too confident and it says bad things as if this was a definite truth. So I was intrigued and I thought to myself, well, let's give it a try. <laughs> so I've tried it for several things. Um, one of the things I've used it is for 
starting uh, a new subject, for example, when I don't know much, I just have the very beginning of, of an idea, then I ask it how to to reformulate, to change it and um, to give me some other ideas. And then I have something like a pitch, you know, which is more interesting than my first idea. Other things are also uh, a help for writing tutorials because most of the time um, I tend to forget some of the commands I entered despite using the history on Linux, for example. And this thing has been able to help me in some cases uh, when I was, you know, um, for example, I start on a Linux machine where I already have lots of packages installed. And I think that everybody should have those uh, packages, but no, uh, in the real world, people don't have these packages installed. And ChatGPT is able to tell me, hmm, maybe you should add these commands. And so I guess this makes for slightly better tutorials. And the last thing I have, uh, no, not the last thing, too, before the last thing, um, lately on community discourse, uh, Jenkins, Jenkins, oh, you know, the um, forum for Jenkins, uh, there are lots of questions and I didn't feel um, okay with some um, questions never having any answer. And unfortunately, my knowledge of Jenkins is not that big. So sometimes I wanted to help and get some answers to people without knowing the subject. So I asked ChatGPT for some help. And yes, yeah, sometimes it gave me some very convincing answers that were plenty wrong. Some of them I was able to spot uh, the wrongness of it, you know, because I usually test. Um, but sometimes the question is so complicated or so far away uh, from my knowledge base that I'm not equipped with what I need to test. So I may have answered a few times with um, how is could would you know conditional uh, maybe that's a lead you should explore but one time I totally failed and I didn't change the message I didn't say this was helped by chat GPT this was generated by chat GPT and I gave an answer that was 100% wrong and sounding over confident and somebody spotted it thank you Basil for that and yes, that's the limit of the thing. Uh, I get that if you want to use ChatGPT, fine, you will learn some things, but please take the time to test, review, and even discuss with ChatGPT because sometimes uh, you spot something fishy and you tell ChatGPT, mm, I think you're wrong. And then it will rethink, reformulate, uh, make other um, proposals. And sometimes it will guide you through the correct answer but sometimes no it doesn't know everything about Jenkins and yeah so I'd say um, maybe not ignore chat GPT you could give it a try but with a grain of salt uh, if that makes sense you know yeah. Ooh, that was a long <laughs> monologue thanks Bruno I, I like I said I, I agree completely I think there's a lot to take away from it and things to maybe hold back on or be more critical of, but there's, there's good with it. And there, and it's helped you. You gave examples of how it's helped you. Like that's invaluable. That matters. Uh, but obviously with good and bad, everything. And you know, sometimes I have some bad hair day. Um, and you know, I'm all sometime an old grumpy man. And when I want to answer somebody, um, most of the time, what I would write is not as benevolent as I'd like it to be. So yes, I've also used it uh, once or twice when I wanted to answer a Jenkins um, community user and it was not kind enough. It's not uh, what I feel really inside, but sometimes you, you're not, yeah, there are days where you're not able to be as kind and benevolent as you'd like. So yes, once or twice, uh, ChatGPT also helped me reformulate so that it was more aligned with um, uh, Jenkins community rules. Nice. Thank you very much, Bruno. I appreciate you sharing all of that. Uh, Mark, how, uh, how about yourself? So I liked I liked the argument from Gavin Morgan and Spinek in the chat 
session where they noted it may be undetectable, right? The the use of the use of Chat GPT may in fact be undetectable because if someone's using it as a coach or as a help, and then they validate the steps themselves and they and they refine the steps, refine whatever it created, it fundamentally looks like human writing. And we just don't have the tools to say you were assisted by a bot uh, because we can't tell the difference, right? To, to Bruno's point of the Turing test, right? If, if Alan Turing's assertion was, if you can't tell the difference between the computer and a human being, uh, you, you, you can't tell the difference. <laughs> And and so this case, it's that's real. Now, I'm still worried. So okay, if it's undetectable to those of us who are reviewers, there's probably no real way of preventing it, because if we can't detect it, there's mm -hmm. no way we're going to create machinery detected either. I am worried. On the flip side, Stack Overflow has an awful lot more reviewers on it than we do. And when they said in their in their rationale for why they were banning chat GPT answers, it's because it overwhelmed their human reviewers. Mm -hmm. And and I can understand that, right? If if the machine is if machines are submitting answers and you're relying on the skills of a subject matter matter expert like Stack Overflow does and like we do, it's very easy to see that humans validating those steps are going to take much, take much longer than the machine that created the steps. The, that imbalance will overwhelm. So, so I, think, I think it's fair for us to have a, I think it would be fair for us to have a policy that allows us to do what they say, which was, Kevin, if you go back to that one, where they, mm -hmm. at the bottom of the Stack Overflow page, they say moderators are allowed to, to suspend for up to 30 days if someone is copying and pasting GPT content onto the site. Uh, it may be that we say, we, we broaden it. Instead of saying GPT content, we say content of questionable validity, validity or content mm -hmm. which has, because it's, it's not so much, the problem with, for Stack Overflow, I think, is not so much that, they, they, that it was generated by machine, it's that it damages the credibility of the site by its mere existence, right? And and if we mm -hmm. look at something and say, we had a chat GPT generated documentation pull request to Jenkins.io not long ago. Mm -hmm. We looked at it, reviewed it. It it was phrased marvelously. Oh my sakes, it was well phrased, confident, well stated, it's, uh, and good content, except for the parts that were completely wrong. <laughs> yeah. and, and that was the dismaying thing. It's like, Oh my sakes, all of the hints that I would usually use to detect this might be wrong, lack of confidence in the phrasing or or incorrect tenses on verbs or whatever, whatever hints might have been there for me were not there. And the only check I had as a subject matter expert was to be sure I validated every single item that was written there. Now, now that that document, had it been right, would have been exactly the right thing to merge. But if it had it was given that it was wrong, it would have been incorrect to merge it because now we've got something published as authoritative that's just wrong. Right. So now I've I've said an awful lot. The idea is, I think it's healthy to have a policy that says we expect content to be good quality, and we reserve the right to ban people who submit poor quality content. And we've seen poor quality content coming from chat GPT generated answers. <laughs> yep. Now the, 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 go, go ahead. ahead, sorry. No, no, please. Oh, okay. I see all the problems with uh, chat GPT and AI tools for Jenkins. The first one is that if people get their answers from chat GPT, uh, they may never tell um, write it down everywhere on you know on the web so on on Jenkins or whatever so the answer if it's not already somewhere in the documentation will be lost forever and that's a pity for the Jenkins project the other mm -hmm. thing is if we don't manage to um, spot the 
ChatGPT generated, uh, and it makes its way into the documentation. Then, as you said, Mark, uh, this will be a new source of truth, which is wrong, <laughs> which is completely wrong. And then the next generation of ChatGPT will be trained on that wrong data. And so it will degrade over time and it will worse and worse and worse. And that's a problem for me. Uh, good point on the, the training source, because mm. so I asked Google Bard, uh, a chat GPT competitor, to describe how to adopt a Jenkins plugin. And I was thoroughly impressed because it did a good job of quoting from the Jenkins adopt a plugin page, except for the pieces that it got wrong. Yeah. And the second or third, it offered three variants and the second and third variant were better than the first variant. But I had to, as a subject matter expert, evaluate that content and, and decide, okay, which of these actually is stating things because they all looked very good. So yeah, okay. Now, now in terms of a, I, I like Bruno, your observation that given that we can expect machine learning to use our, our content, our documentation as a reference, as a training source, right? We hope it does then that gives us even more incentive to want for the material to be accurate, to be well stated, to be, to be all those things. And, and I don't object if chat GT, GPT helps us do that better, great. But the, the goal, the ultimate goal really is accurate, legible, understandable documentation. Yeah. So, okay. I've, I've thus argued both sides of the argument and that's shameful because I don't have a, I don't have an easy answer on, on, I, I'm not, I know, I think I understand why Stack Overflow banned it. Mm -hmm. I think it's a, it's an unhealthy thing for them to, and potentially for us, if we became overwhelmed by chat GPT answers or chat, chat GPT based, based pull requests, we would have to say outright banned. Mm -hmm. I think and it's, if, go ahead. Oh, uh, sorry, Mark, I was just going to say, I think it's it's also something to keep in mind com, looking at a pull request versus a community response or forum post or something like that, because the pull request, we at least have the opportunity to, to review and check that stuff before it gets posted, whereas the community response, it's like it's instantaneous and um, it's... Yeah, that, that we can verify in the information if we have the opportunity to. Uh, not so much if that opportunity never arises. So um, there's there's definitely use for it, I think. But it's it has to be with the understanding that it's not perfect and 100% accurate every single time. And that uh, you do need to, as a user, really make sure that what, what is happening is correct. So... Yeah, Gavin's one of Gavin's Gavin's points in the chat channels was that as a pull request submitter, I am responsible for the accuracy of my content. No matter what source generated it, it's ultimately going in my name, and therefore, I'm responsible for accuracy of that content. Uh, that didn't. That still doesn't resolve my worry that yeah, but a big organization like Stack Overflow was found that their their moderators were being overwhelmed by this mm. and, and and it's i i don't have a solution for that but i th i think it may just be we put into a policy a statement that we are allowed to ban people if they're if they are generating non-useful or 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 poor quality content and that's that's a that's a policy that could live independent of any ai because if we get junk pull, junk pull requests from Hacktoberfest, we ban them. If we get junk pull requests from Google Summer of Code contributors, whether they're generated by a bot or not, we ban them, right? We, mm -hmm. we are not shy about banning people who waste our time with junk. Right. And yeah, I, and especially where ChatGPT has a lot more moderators available to do that moderation. Um, it's it's uh, it's telling that they're just outright saying don't even think about it. So, yeah, yep. yeah, um, oh, yeah. Um, so I just realized uh, we're at time. So uh, I do want to wrap things up, but that was a really great conversation, and I think this is something that will be discussed going forward. Um, 
even if we put that policy in place, it's still something that can be discussed at a later point in time. Uh, but more to come on that, and we'll we'll come back to it. Um, thank you very, very much for joining today. Appreciate it. The video will be available 24 to 48 hours. Uh, and uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you again. And have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Bye-bye.